You know, I, I have friends that say they don't fish because they don't have the patience. <laughs> patience, my ass. What it takes is incredible concentration. I mean, you gotta be able to read a stream just like an expert reads a bottle of wine. And you gotta look at little micro currents and you gotta understand about insect life. Uh, I mean, you gotta start thinking like a fish. It's really like a huge puzzle that I'm trying to solve. You know, it opens up an entire world of how everything's connected together. It's really this completely immersive thing that is, is fly fishing. The first fish I remember catching, I actually fell in the water. <laughs> I love that moment, hooking fish, that fish, your fly that two seconds. And then you want another one. <laughs> that connection on the other end of the line, that's the, the magic for me. Fishing is like one of the things that defines my life. It's not a sport, it's a real passion. And it's all about connecting with some something wild and free. And trout can't be bought or stolen. They, they just live in those cool places and I love to be in in those places. I've been fishing since I was five, so almost 50 years. And when I'm out fishing, I'm literally alive in that moment. I don't know how to explain it, but it's magical. It's truly magical. I actually am touching something that's almost perfect. You know, when I'm fishing, I, I, it, you take all of it into account, the sun, what the wind's doing. Um, you know, it's not terribly complicated for me. I, I see what's going on in the environment and do what I know to do, which is very little. <laughs> Fish. I have a, a spot I like to fish in Rocky Mountain National Park that um, no one went to, uh, an old growth canyon that burned in January two years ago at this hour. Obviously the lack of snow up here in Estes Park, not a single flake on the ground, is not boding well for this situation. However, they are... Fires are burning in January. Fires become a huge event here in the West. The temperatures are rising, the droughts are more severe. All those things are having an impact on, on the fish that we love and the really fragile ecosystems that they live in. We never used to have stream closures because of hot water. And now, you know, they have to close the Madison, they have to close some streams in Yellowstone because the water gets too warm and then the fish are stressed out. Those red dots are the warmest temperatures ever in cities. Folks, this has never happened before. Now with that heat came an awful lot of storms, about a thousand storms kicked off in Friday. You know, we've had devastating floods. Like streams down to bedrock. We see snowpacks coming later and leaving earlier. We see millions of acres of forests that have literally kicked the bucket and that's climate change, that's what's happening. So one of the things that not many people understand today is that the science on climate change is really clear, and we know that CO2 has a, an effect on temperature. About 97% of the people who work on this, the experts, the climate scientists, are in agreement that climate change is a huge issue and that we're causing it. The emissions from our vehicles and from power plants, anytime we burn fossil fuels, and we dump 30 billion tons of CO2 into the atmosphere each and every year and that's having an impact. It's raising the temperature here. And then we see all these things happening that we've never seen before. And something happened today in this country that's never happened before. Take a close look across the southeast, almost 1,300 severe weather reports. Today was day 87 for those folks to have 100 degree heat. Much of the country is about to feel record warmth with the start of December. Meteorologist Kim Cunningham. I see things changing um, pretty rapidly. I'm not a scientist, but uh, it worries me, you know? I've been fishing all my life. 
You know, it's a habit I picked up when I was about six years old or something. You know, you start out young like that and it stays with you forever. When I'm out on the river, I belong. I mean, it's about belonging. It's about being someplace where it's natural to be. And then I look at my little boy, he's nine, and I think, you know, whether he falls in love like I have or not, I want to give him those opportunities and I want to make it like he has the chance to do that. And man, it's all at risk. And, and for whatever reason, we don't see that clearly. At least we're sure not acting like it's happening. I, I mean, I love catching fish. I mean, it's pretty obvious to me that fish need a few things and it's pretty simple. They need cold, clean, clear water. You know, it's the last thing that I'd ever want is some of these places to disappear. This is my religion. I mean, I love fishing. It's one of the few things that I do that time just kind of washes away. When I think about all the threats to cold water fisheries, it makes me incredibly angry. Of course, wild and native trout live in, in cold water, pure water habitats, such as we are so blessed to have here in the West. And that's one of the problems that we face as climate changes. We don't have that reservoir of cool, clear, clean water coming down from the mountains to keep our rivers and streams cool. Without cold, clean water, we don't have wild and native species of trout. If we let that slide, we failed. And we have to take the time to say, okay, let's look at this honestly and accurately, and what do we have to do about it? We're not gonna turn things around without changing government, because government can make big changes. I mean, if you, if you got a politician who's running for office who thinks he's smarter than 98% of the world's climate scientists, they're crooks or they're dumbasses. We have the tools, the technology to really change the course that we're on. We've got the technology and what we need now is the leadership. Here in the US, I mean, we like to think that we're special. We like to think that we're unique. In many ways we are, because we have the ability to lead. We have to lead in the world by our example. We've always been there, we've always done it in the past, and there's no reason to think we can't do it going into the future. At a time right now where our federal leaders are kind of irresolute, climate change should be right at the forefront. I mean, it's really important that we talk about this and that we take action on it while we still can, because we can come out the other side of this. There is hope, but if this gets away from us, it takes everything else away. And if the U.S. doesn't lead on climate change, nothing gets done. You know, we fixed things in the past, like acid rain, the hole in the ozone. The science says there is a chance to fix this, but we have to act right now, and we have to act very fast. As a community of anglers and hunters and outdoors people, as a whole, we're a powerful voice and we can change things, you know, speak up. This is the defining social environmental issue of my generation and probably all generations to come. There's that Norm McLean quote, you know, no one understands time until eternity is compressed into a second and the whole world's a fish. And then that fish is gone. <laughs>